have this uh, idea for a case study which was presented already two months ago in the Zagreb meeting. So most of you, you have seen this presentation. You have been at this workshop. Uh, the structure is uh, here, we are dealing with another type of action, which is a uh, snow loading. And uh, the structure considered is a steel roof of a stadium. You might remember that there have been some collapses in uh, Central Europe a couple of years ago due to heavy snow. This is not only the heavy snow, which was the reason for that, but also the reduced resistance of the roofs. Well, uh, we have to link the case study, and I think it's a good idea to link the study, uh, case studies to some kind of framework, uh, but uh, uh, this is under development. I will present the results we presented also in, in uh, Zagreb. And also I will uh, talk about some improvements, some conclusions and recommendations. Since I am a member of the working group uh, five dealing with implementation into practice. If you have a, a, a let's say you have to, dis, uh, to look what kind of monitoring one has, and this is already distinguished in the in the standards, like permanent monitoring, periodic monitoring, spot monitoring. The issues which are dealt with in the standards are also described, so I don't want to go into detail into that. Improvements which are necessary are acceptance and decision criteria, because you might have some decisions which can be related to a prolongation of the lifetime or to the use of the structure for a certain event. And these standards and improvement must be compatible to the other standards which are used in practical design. Uh, the idea came from, as I said before, from damages on roof in the Czech Republic and in Bavaria in the year 2006 due to heavy snow falling and uh, classical steel roofs uh, have collapsed. The case study here is the roof of a stadium uh, which has a cantilever system it's a consequence class 3 structure. You know the Eurocodes are classifying the structures according to the consequences of failure into three classes. The most dangerous class is the class number 3. The snow load is uh, higher, 33%, compared to the code which was used at the design stage. We can have an online monitoring as it is used for the snow depth. And there are uh, sensors doing that described in the literature. One can uh, define a limit state for bending, uh, for exceeding the resistance of the structure, and also monitor or use information about uh, the variability of the influencing parameters, like the strength, the, stre uh, the yielding strength of the steel, the model uncertainty, the shape factor for the snow load, and what is very important, the the density, which is a function of the snow, lo uh, snow depth. D is a snow depth. So you can, uh, uh, if you measure the snow depth, this is the easiest uh, way of doing that. And this is uh, very well uh, done uh, in, uh, in the practice. You will uh, have a function of the reliability uh, as a function of the snow depth. So if the snow depth is increasing, the reliability will decrease. And you might also have the influence of the variability of important parameters, like in this case of the shape factor mi, uh, which is, uh, there is a lot of work on the shape factor. Uh, but you have also what uh, we were looking in the last two months, we found out that there are also direct measurements of the snow load. So you don't need to measure the snow depth. We have uh, early warning systems and patterns for uh, such kind of, uh, this is about half a meter by half a meter, but they are also bigger one, two meters by two meters. And you can this, you put this, they are costing some money, 7,000 euros. And you can put, usually the owners put one or two of these uh, warning systems for excessive roof loads 
on, uh, on roofs. So the benefits which will you have, they, it can be, for example, a concert like Guns N' Roses are here. It is not snowing, but it is a big concert. So you can have the benefit if you use the stadium, you will have, of course, tickets, you will earn money. But on the other hand, you have the risk that something will happen. So you have the consequences in case that something will happen. So you have be benefit versus consequences for a temporary use of a structure. So you have to use acceptability criteria for temporary use of structures, which is not exactly the same as you will use for a 50 years period of, uh, of uh, design of a structure. So you will come out by some, uh, if you define this criteria, so you will see the uh, influence of your information out uh, in the ratio between benefit and cost of failure. So you will see what is, if, under what conditions your target reliability for this temporary use is covered. For example, if you use a, uh, a 3.8 uh, here uh, as acceptable value, you will, you, you will see under which condition uh, of the ratio benefit versus cost this is uh, covered. And again here, you will have uh, you will see under which measured snow depth this acceptable criterion is uh, fulfilled. So you, have, you need some acceptable criterion also for your reliability level to see if this uh, is uh, fulfilled and if the structure can be used for the event. You can do it again, as I said, not through the snow depth, but through the direct measurement of the snow load, which has a reduced uncertainty. In addition, you can use other type of information, as we discussed in Zagreb, survival of a high snow load, satisfactory past performance of your structure, so you can do updating of the limit state. You may have deformation also measurement, again, an updating of a limit state, and you can also use weather forecast where you can use data of forecast of wet snow on the top of the existing snow depth. So just going into the possibilities for monitoring, you may have uh, met, uh, weather stations you can use. Weather station data, you can use snow depth measurements, and you can also use direct snow load measurements. You may combine of them. They have different costs, so you can use the theoretical aspects discussed in the past here. So you have these three options. You may combine, you may use that. You have, however, to be as a structure engineer to identify critical members, where to put the sensors, where to measure. You have to identify through the target reliability the threshold values. And you may, may also consider the robustness aspects, which means system reliability aspects uh, of your stadium roof. So this is the state of the, of the situation. We have, of course, we are open for discussion and we have to see the compatibility with the other case studies. We, we need these improvements, especially in view of the implementation into guidelines, as I mentioned before. So I would like to close here. I don't want to repeat the um, more details which were presented and are also have been published in the workshop in Zagreb. Very good. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any other questions for clarification? Uh, you said the benefits are the, the set of the tickets for the concert. Yeah. The cost? The cost? Uh, How can we... The co yes, you have the cost of monitoring. You have the, uh, and the, the cost of... Uh, uh, the failure costs are the most considerable yeah, costs. Uh, this is a, a boy, uh, I have to go into de details. Then you have costs uh, which are economical costs and, of course, human life. Human life is uh, through the societal wi willingness to pay criteria, which but we use. We, have numbers, I we are using numbers. This is used in the new ISO document. Uh, which number is the ISO document? 2394, 2394. Uh, and we can combine that. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a document which is now a very modern one and it is also used for deriving targets uh, in the future Eurocodes. 
uh, yes. It's, always, it, it's reflecting also the actual economy of the country. It depends on the LQI principle, and this is the idea behind. Yeah, thank you very thank much. You. Uh, so we can uh, discuss more, more questions uh, further on. I think uh, the important, yes, I completely agree, is to see the whole thing, how can we integrate with 